Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Gulat kayo, no? Uh, Pastor Rui right now is in Tarlac. Uh, he's in our Victory Tarlac Church and he's ministering there. So I'm pitching in for week two ng ating series. And ang maganda po dito sa series natin, dahil from week one, we're focusing on Psalm 119. The whole chapter po. That's That will be six weeks. And if you have your Bibles with you right now or yung mga digital, digital phones nyo, I want you to put that on Psalms 119. At ang gagawin po natin, we will start at verse 9. So, we are on the second alphabet, which is kung titignan natin si Beth, no? Pero hindi po actually Beth ang tawag sa kanya in Hebrew. But, uh, when we talk about this month, eh, sino po sa inyo nakakaramdam na ng lamig? Ang lamig na, no? Ano po yung pinakamahirap gawin pag ganitong panahong malamig? Yung maligo, di ba? Oh, bumangon, maligo. Anong problema doon? Di ba, syempre, pag maliligo ka, ang sinasabi ng mga tao, mahirap yung unang buhos. Di ba, yun daw yung pinakamalamig, di ba? Ngayon, eto ang tip ko sa inyo. Para hindi nyo maranasan yung unang buhos, dahil kasi yun lang naman ang malamig, eh. Kunin nyo yung unang buhos, itapon nyo, yung pangalawa, okay na yun. Yeah, di ba? Ganun lang ka kadali yan. But nevertheless, let, let's, let's continue with our series, Walk the Talk. Alam nyo po ang hirap para sa isang tao na sabihin nila, eto yung ginagawa ko, pero kabalik na naman sa ginagawa nila. And at the end of this series, I hope and I pray that we will, not just a people of God, but as a believer, we read God's Word, that's one, I hope and I pray that you're reading the Word of God, okay? And we desire not only to meditate on it and to memorize. Now, here's, here's the clincher. Minsan kasi pag may desire tayo, eh pag nawala na yun, hindi na. Wala na tayo, hindi na natin i-pursue yan, right? But this is what I want to put into your hearts right now. Not just desiring the Word of God, reading the Word of God, but we will crave. Sabihin mo, crave. Yan. Anong ibig sabihin ng crave? Yung talagang, Lord, gusto ko to. Pagka may, may, may gusto kang kainin, hinahanap-hanap mo yan. And that is what we need to understand that we will not just desire, but crave the Word of God. And also, the ultimate goal is to walk in the Word of God and obey it. Ngayon, ang hirap minsan, no? paano ba natin store? yung word ni God at susundin natin. Ay, hindi ko natasabihin ko sino yung matigas ang ulo sa kalsada, di ba? Yung bawal na nga tumawid, tatawid pa, red light na nga, idedretso pa, yung mga ganung bagay, tapos sasabihin mo, I am a following citizen. Wow, hindi nga. Di ba? But, here's the thing. When we say that we walk in the word of God and obey it, it means that we have to store God's Word in our hearts and in our minds and to pray the Word of God. And every day as we crave God's Word, every day as we read God's Word, every day as we obey and at the same time uh, memorize God's Word, we will now be transformed day by day into the very image of Christ. Are you following Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Yan. Anong itsura niyan? Yan, maganda, di ba? Maganda at guwapo eh. Pero let me just challenge you as you look at to that person. Yes, may mga flaws yan. But as we continue to obey God's Word, as we continue to follow and read God's Word, that person is being transformed into the very image and likeness of Christ. Pero let me just throw you something. According to Brennan Manning, the greatest single cause of atheism in this world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and walk out of the door and deny Him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Hello? Guilty, right? Bakit? Ano yung nangyayari sa atin? On a given day, which is Sunday, talagang ang bait mo. Pero pagdating ng Monday all the way to Saturday, you have a different life. 
And that is the reason why we're studying not just Psalms 119, but what can we do when we say, I walk the talk. Yan. But let me just give you something. It's not just uh, walking the talking, but it should be reflective. Ang sinasabi natin, we should preach what we say. Ang hirap kasi, no? All values are caught rather than taught. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa anak mo, anak, huwag kang uminom. Tapos ikaw umiinom ka. Anak, alam mo, ang paninigarilyo, nakakasama ng katawan niyan. Pengin ang lighter. Yung mga ganun, di ba? Mapapansin niyo yun eh, yung mga tao, kung hindi pa rin nagbabago, sa mga birthday party, pag magsisindi kayo ng kandila, subukan niyo yun. Pasindi naman, no? Ang gagawin niya, yung iba, hindi makarelate, no? Para ano yan? <laughs> Let me tell you about this man. His name is Timothy Treadwell. Timothy Treadwell was named the Grizzly Man. Bakit? During his time, he lived in California and dumating sa point niya na medyo ang hindi maganda yung buhay niya, napunta siya sa mga bisyo and all of that. And what really happened is he transferred from California to Alaska wherein he stayed in the wilderness. True enough, sabi niya, I find or he found his peace with the bears. Sino sa inyo dito pag nakita niyo yung bear parang gusto niyong yakapin? Di ba? Now, grizzly bear, they are wild, and yung, yung isip nila, hindi naman gano'n ka, ka-stable. So what happened? Tim Treadwell slowly tried to get close with the bears. And he said, every time he meets a bear, pinapangalanan niya yon. Parang si Adam, eh, no? And this is not just the, 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 the problem here. The problem is that one, one year, or yung isang season, Dumating yung time na every hunters were being kicked out or they were said, wag na kayong pumunta dyan sa area na yan. Bakit? It is the time where bears are eating in preparation for hibernation. Ito ngayon yung mga nangyayari. Supposedly, Timothy Treadwell will fly back to California. Pero sabi niya, hindi ko pa nakikita yung, yung bear na mahal na mahal ko. Ang pangalan noon e si Sally. Eh, ako kung saling pangalan niya. So what happened, kinaawa niya yung, air, yung airline staff, kaya na bump off siya. Bumalik ngayon siya together with his uh, girlfriend doon sa mismo wildlife area na yon. Picture this, scarcity of food. Dahil kasi hindi umulan nung time na yon. And during that uh, season, yung river hindi pa puno ng mga salmons. So talagang kulang ng pagkain and bears are fighting for food. May mga warning signs na. Another thing, he should not be there with his girlfriend. Pero sabi niya, I have to go back because the, the, the bears are my friend and hindi naman nila ako gagalawin. Sad story on 2003, when they got back to that place where all the bears are looking for food in the middle of the night, they should have a pepper spray to protect them from the bear and an electrical portable fence to guard them. Wala lahat yun. Lumabas si Timothy Treadwell dahil kasi may mga dumadaan and guess what happened? Both of them were eaten alive by the bear. Naiwan lang po sa kanya yung kamay niya na may relo. As if Ito yung sinasabi ng mga investigators as if the bears were telling your time is up. Ito yung pinaka-grabing nakita ko. It says here, the grizzly man, the documentary mania, Timothy Treadwell's death was as sensational as his life having presumed that he could live safely among the grizzly bears. You know what? If we compare... Timothy Threadwell, to our spiritual life, we're no different. Because we are assuming and presuming that we could live safely among sin. Kasalanan lang yan. Wala naman, kaibigan ko yan. You know what? This is what, this is what Cripple Gate says. In the spiritual realm, we forget the dangerous threat of temptation. 
We snuggle up to sin and act as though it is not destructive if you are not careful. Listen to this. Sin and temptation are hunting for precious life. Hello? Ano ba masama dyan? Friends lang naman kami. Brad, may asawa ka na. Kau naman, ang sama ng iniisip mo. Hello? Ano ba naman yung isang bote lang? Maugulat kayong isang bote, isang case na. Ano ba naman yung isang stick lang? Ano ba naman yung makipag-blend in ako and make me uh, be like what they are? Sabi nga ni Paul, to the weak, I am weak. Hello, are you giving the right context on that? Now, we as a believer should know Teka, if I step out of this, ano mangyayari sa akin? If I move a little inch closer to the ledge, will I fall? But let me just remind you, never ever assume like Timothy Threadwell that you will be a friend to sin. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, please uh, flip over or Go to Psalms 119, and I can I request everyone to stand on their feet as we read God's Word. Psalms 119, we'll start by verse 9 all the way to 16, and it says, How can a young man keep his ways pure by guarding it according, by guarding it according to your word? With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as it's in all riches. Verse 15 says that I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And with that, Lord, we pray and declare. That as we read and as we, Lord, study your word, I pray and I declare that you will just speak into our hearts right now. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray, open our hearts, open our minds, that we will be able to see and understand what needs us to follow in walking, not just walking with your word, but storing your word in our hearts. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You can now take your seats. First question, how can I remain holy in, unho- uh, in a world of unholy? Tama ba yan, Dennis? Kaya ba nating maging holy? Alam nyo, when we talk about holy, the word itself is heavy, right? And if you look at the, if you look at the dictionary, it means that it is dedicated or consecrated to God or a religious purpose it is sacred. Now, pag na mo bang isang tao, masasabi mo bang holy siya? Hindi, di ba? Now, hindi mo rin pwedeng sabihin na ang isang tao holy the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he dress. We cannot define. But if we look at the Bible, when the Lord is saying, Be holy for I am holy, it means that we are set apart. Pag na natin yung sarili natin, compared to the world, we should be different. Hindi pwedeng pag tinignan ka, yung laro na tinatawag natin yung uh, look for, ano? Ano ba tawag doon? Ha? Spot the difference? Pag tinignan mo siya, meron bang difference between you and the world? Or pag sinabi na parang mas malala ka pa kesa doon sa mundo ah? Now, when we say holy, it's not just the way we say things, it's not just the way we act, but it's a constant living. It's a lifestyle for us. Now, that question probably will linger in your mind. Pwede ba ako maging holy sa mundo na hindi, hindi naman talaga holy? Now, let us look at the answer in God's Word in Psalms 119. Let's go back in verse 9. It says, how can a young man keep his ways pure. Now, bakit tanong niyo, bakit young man? Bakit hindi old man? Di ba? Bakit hindi middle-aged man? Bakit young man? 
Because when we talk about young men, it is speaking about youth. Sino dito yung mga youth? Wala. Ako lang. Bakit youth? Dahil kasi, when we talk about youth, it speaks about that person when habits are forming. Right? Pag may anak kang maliit, tinuturoan mo na siyang magsalita, tinuturoan mo na siyang uh, kung ano-ano because you are now training the child and whatever you feed the child, eventually it will become part of his DNA. Kaya nga minsan, di ba, pag tinignan mo, uy, kamukhang kamukha siya ng daddy. Oh, di ba, parang dirindiri ka pa eh, no? Bakit ganun, di ba? And people are saying, as young as one year old, they are like sponge. The more that they see things, the more that you do things, ginagaya nila. Hello? Ang isang taong matanda, eh sasabihin niya, ako to. Ako na yan. Kaya nga, there's, there's a saying wherein, you cannot bend or form an iron that is cold. Right? Kahit anong pukpuk mo dyan, kahit anong gawin mo dyan, siguro ma- mabibend mo siya in a little, pero baku-baku pa rin. Pero when the iron is hot, sinasabi nila, strike while the iron is hot. Bakit you can form that iron according to your desire? Now, what else? When we talk about youth, it speaks about friendships that are created. Alam nyo, sa totoo lang, no? Identities are formed pagdating ng anak nyo, preteens. Pagdating ng preteens, nandiyan na yung nakikita niya identity niya, uy, mas fit, fit in yata ako dito kaysa sa family ko. Mas nakikita ko yung, yung sarili ko na belong ako. Kaya nga sa, sa era na to, ang kinakatakutan ng mga tao, ng mga kabataan ngayon, is the word FOMO. Sino sa inyo familiar dun sa word na FOMO? Di ba? FOMO yan? Akin yata yung FOMO na yan eh. Hindi. FOMO is fear of missing out. Hindi mo gustong hindi ka kasama dun, hindi ka belong dun. Are you following? So that's the reason why the, the scripture or uh, the psalmist is now speaking about and and then telling about how can a young man keep his ways pure. Not just friendships are created, but also decisions are made. Hello? Sino sa inyo dito hanggang ngayon, nasa bahay pa rin kayo ng nanay nyo? Yan. Wala namang problema doon. Pero kung studyante ka at makipag-date ka, parang awa mo na. Kanino mo kinukuha yung pan-date mo? Yan? Yeah? Kung wala kang pandate, I'm speaking to men. Kung wala kang pandate, at hihingi ka sa mga magulang mo, huwag ka na makapag-date. Hello? Bibili ka ng pinakamahal na cellphone. Ayan, lumabas na ang iPhone 14. Di ba? Kung, kung meron kang iPhone 14 at ang, 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 ang SIM card mo, eh, walang laman or walang load, ihingi mo pa sa nanay mo, eh, okay lang kung dalawang iPhone 12. 14 din yun, mga kapatid. Okay. But what I'm saying here is this, decisions are made and sometimes the youth will decide something that is not right. Kaya nga importante that we seek counsel from people who are much of our age. Hello? Now, let's move on. 1 Corinthians 15.35 says, Sabi nga kanina, no? decisions are made because do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good Morals. Sino sa inyo dito, sasabihin nyo, ah, dito sa opisina na to, babaguhin ko to. Ako lang ang kristyano dito. Batting average, baka mamaya ikaw na yung kasama nila. Hello? Huwag kang magsasama ng isang bulok na kamatis sa isang basket na punong-puno ng mga gagandang kamatis. Dadating yung time, lahat yan mabubulok din. Do you see the picture? As we continue, the Bible is saying, how can a young man keep his ways pure? The answer is this. How can we remain unholy in an unholy world? By guarding it according to your word. Look at this. The word of God is the key to purity in an impure or impure world. 
How can we do that? By guarding it. Sino sa inyo dito, pag uwi nyo ng bahay, lalak nyo yung pinto nyo bago kayo matulog? Lahat tayo, di ba? Chuchek nyo kung sarado. Chuchek nyo kung may bukas na gripo. Ichuchek nyo kung may bukas na ilaw. Ichuchek nyo kung may bukas. Yung mga ganong bagay. Bakit? You want to make sure that as you sleep at night, you are comfortable, you know na walang papasok sa bahay nyo dahil kasi nakalak yan. And that is what the scripture is now saying when we keep ourselves pure by guarding the word of God in our hearts. Question, are we guarding it like it is as if this will entail your whole life? A.W. Tozer says, to have found God and still to pursue Him is the soul's paradox of love, scorned indeed by the, by the too easily satisfied religionist, but justified in happy experiences by the children of the burning heart. J.W. Tozer is explaining right now, if you have found God and still to pursue Him is a soul's paradox of love. If we love the Lord, if we love Him as we are saying that, Lord, Ikaw talaga yung, yung, yung nagbago sa buhay ko, then you will pursue Him. Then you will make sure that everything that what the Scripture is saying is in your heart right now. So, let me just give you something that will really appreciate or ma-appreciate natin yung Scripture. Sabi nga natin, ano, this is an acrostic alphabet. Last week, pina, binasa natin si Aleph, right? Tinuturuan natin yung mga anak natin. I have two hands, a left and the right. So, eto ngayon si Beth. But in, in, in Hebrew, it's not pronounced as Beth, but it, it's pronounced as Ba-yith. B-A-H-Y-E-T. That's ba yit. Okay? Ibig sabihin yan, the letter B or Beth represents a tent or a house. Now, the scripture is pointing that our hearts are like a tent or a house. So, ibig sabihin nito, as we store God's word in our hearts, as we put things into our hearts, the Bible in Proverbs say that whatever stores in our heart, the mouth speaks. So, ano ba yung in-store natin sa heart natin? Just like what Herbert Lockyer said, making our heart a home for the Word of God in an impure world surrounded by filth and sin, greed and pride, God's Word is the means to personal purity. What you put into your hearts right now, garbage in, garbage out. Hello? How do you read God's Word? Are you at home with God's Word or stranger ka? Naranasan nyo na na pumunta kayo sa isang bahay, pinatulog kayo at hindi kayo makatulog at sinasabi nyo na mamahay kayo, right? Ibig sabihin yun because you know it's not your home. You're not comfortable. Lahat ng gagawin mo, iingatan mo. Dahil kasi pag may ginawa kang mali at hindi maganda yung nafe-feel mo, baka may masabi yung tao na nakatira doon. Kaya prim and proper ka. But if you are at home, sa mga bahay nyo, siguro, especially mga nanonood sa atin online, nakikinig, siguro mga nakasando at saka nakadaster lang yan. At home ka eh. Now, when you go to church, you should be at home because this is your spiritual family. Huwag naman kayong pumunta dito, nakadaster lang kayo, tapos nakasando. Sabi mo kasi, Pastor, comfortable eh. Hindi ganun. Pero what we're saying here is this, is it also when we grab the Bible, open every page of the Bible, are we at home reading it, or are we a stranger? Kaya hirap na hirap tayong magbasa ng Bible, kaya ayaw nating magbasa ng Bible because we are not at home. And that is what Psalms 119 verse 9 says. That in the second alphabet, it represents a tent or a house. Are we comfortable in the very Word of God that are stored in our hearts right now. Going back to my question, na intindihan na natin, ano? How can we become holy? By guarding God's Word in us. 
But this question, how can we keep our ways pure and living according to God's Word? First thing we need to understand is we have to pursue God's Word and we have to seek Him with all our hearts. Verse 10, it says, With my whole heart, I seek you. Now, ayan. Alam niyo sa totoo lang, no? seeking is something that treasure hunters do. Di ba na- 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 naalala niyo, no? Pag may hinahanap kayo sa bahay at hindi niyo mahanap, ano sinasabi ng nanay niyo? Gamitin niyo ang? Hindi ang? Yan. Di ba? Pag ano, hanapin mo anak, ginagamit mo kasi bibig. Paano kaya maghanap ang bibig? Nay, hindi ko makita, nay. Pag ganun, di ba? But when the word says that you have to seek it with all of your heart, it means it is with our entire being that we seek God. Hello? And also, when you seek the Lord with all of your hearts, mind, lips, eyes, the pursuit of God Himself. Hello? Are we seeking God with everything or are we seeking God pag may problema lang tayo? Pag nag-break kayo ng girlfriend mo, pag bumabagsak ang business mo, pag hindi maganda ang buhay mo, is that the only time you seek God? Or you seek God whether you are in plenty or whether you are in lack? Hello? It should be our pursuit that we seek God every day. With our entire being, not just when we need Him the most. Psalms 27, 4, one thing, this is David said, that one thing I have asked of the Lord and that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in His presence all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty, the delightful loveliness and majestic grandeur of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Are we seeking the Lord all the days of our life? Are we seeking Him and meditating His presence? Do we spend time sitting and asking God, Lord, what is your will for me right now? Are we sitting in a very quiet environment wherein, Lord, I will just meditate on what I've read? Are we going to do this every day or pag may, may, may time lang ako, okay na ako dun? Hello? Hindi po ako na nakapagbasa ng Bible kasi I'm so busy eh. You know, I have to work and then pag uwi ka, yung mga ganun, pagod na ako. Hello? Is God the top priority? of our life. Remember, Banning Libsha says that you will not passionately pursue God if you don't have a revelation that He has passionately pursued you. How do we see God? Remember in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that He gave His what? Only Son. And that is how passionately God pursued you. In your most unlovable life, in your most unlovable state, the Lord pursued you. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, Lord, hinanap kita, Lord. The Lord is always at your back, but we are always turning our face away from Him. Kaya nga nung pagtalikod mo, ah, magulat ka pa, Lord, nandiyan ka pala. Ano sasabihin, Lord? Matagal na ako nandito sa likod mo, anak. If we will just understand the value that God has given us, we will passionately pursue Him as well. Verse 11 says that I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, if you look that the psalmist is saying that I have stored whose word? God's word. Remember, storing God's word not just in our lips, in our minds, but in our hearts. We need to understand that every time we look at our hearts, our spiritual hearts, this is our tent or house. We store things in our hearts which in the end 
are God's word. Hello? Babalik pa rin ako sa tanong ko, what are you storing in your heart right now? Pag tinignan mo yung puso mo ngayon, o sinabi mo, Lord, tignan mo yung puso ko, ano yung makikita ni Lord sa puso mo? Siyempre po, Pastor, yung crush ko, katabi ko eh. Hello? Remember this. Because again, out from the abundance of our hearts, the mouth will speak. Whatever we store in our hearts, kaya nakita mo ang daming tao nagkakaroon ng negative or nag- nagiging negatron, dahil ano yung nafe-feed sa kanila? Negative. Ano ba naman buhay ito? Ang pangit-pangit. Ano naman? Lahat na lang negative. Hello? But if we replace it with God's Word, we will see not just the perspective of God, but we will see His goodness, His love for us. Na masasabi natin, Lord, o nga no, bakit ba ako reklamo ng reklamo? You will provide naman para sa akin eh. Lord, bakit hanggang ngayon, nag, nag, inis na inis pa rin ako. Pero Lord, sinabi mo, you will restore. Hello? Starting your day. You want to start your day, right? It's not with a breakfast. It is something that you will do by opening the book of God and slowly reading and meditating on it. Because the psalmist says that I might not sin against not just other people, but specifically with God. Let me tell you this. Sin will always fascinate us. But in the end, sin will assassinate us. Kung napanood niyo yung Jurassic Park, di ba? Ano yung ano? Wow! Di ba? Ganun yan eh. Ganun din tayo. If there is temptation in front of us, the first reaction would be, Wow! Alam niyo ba kung bakit pinangalan ni Adam na woman si Eve? Eto ano lang to, kaalaman lang to ah. Dahil kasi di ba pinatulog siya ni Lord? Tapos tinanggalan siya sa tadyang, right? Nagbabasa ba kayong Bible? Parang... Paggising niya, sino yung unang niyang, una niya nakita? Si Eve. Siyempre, tutulog siya, hindi niya nakikita na may kamukha siya at nakita niya, wow! Man! Ah, di ba? Parang dagdag kaalaman sa inyo yan ah. So, sa kanya, kaya woman yun dahil kasi nagulat siya, whoa, man. Dahil kasi, it kamukha ko eh. Yan, tuloy tayo. Remember, sin will always fascinate you. Oh, grabe, parang okay naman siguro. Isang ano lang, isang, isang relasyon lang. One night stand lang. One night stand, hindi ko makuha yun eh, no? Yung one night stand nyo, maghapong kayo nakatayo. Parang wow. Pwede namang one night sitting. Di ba? Kwentuhan kayo. Pero, Think about this. It will always fascinate you, but in the end, the consequences, you will not bear the consequences of what you've done. Kaya huwag mo sabihin, Lord, bakit naman ako ganito? Lord, babalik ka ni God. Ano ba ginawa mo? So let me tell you this. You have to store the very Word of God in your heart that you will not be fascinated in the sin and temptation that is presented before you Because you will now have a deeper understanding. Oh nga no, Lord. What you call sin in the scripture, Lord, help me. Help me turn away from sin or flee away from sin. Now, how do we store God's word in our hearts? Sino dito pag uwi nyo ng bahay, naguhugas kayo ng kamay? Anong ginagamit nyo? Anong ginagamit nyo pag uwi nyo? Pag naguhugas kayo ng kamay, wala? Ha? Huh? Perla? <laughs> Siyempre, gumagamit kayo ng soap, right? So, hindi na ako magbabanggit ng, ng, ano, ng brand. Pero, how do we store God's Word in our heart? By doing soap. What is soap? Number one, scripture. Second, observation. Third is application. And fourth is what we call prayer. Now, how do we do this? When we say scripture, it means that we write down and memorize scripture. Hello? Ano yung mga live verse nyo? Parinig na isa. Jesus wept. 
Siguro pag nagtanong ako, ano pa yung isa? Judas hung himself. Aray ko. Every time, let me, let me tell you this. As you read God's Word, write it down. Hello? Bakit? Kasunod nun yung observation mo. Your observation should be, uh, what do you see in the Scripture that you have read? Now, challenge. Parang, Lord, ano ba? Isang chapter. Even a verse that speaks into your heart, sabihin mo sa sarili mo, etong observation ko, for example, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Lord, You love us so much. Hindi ka na nagdalawang isip na ibigay sa akin. You are now observing. Do you see? Do you, are you following? You're observing the scripture. And then next is what we call application. What God is saying to me today. Lord, when you say that you love me so much that you gave your son to me. Anong ibig sabihin nun? My application, personal application could be this, that because of your great love, that you're willing to give your precious son in behalf of my unrighteousness. Hello? I-apply mo na. May scripture ka. Meron kang observation. Meron kang application. Ano yung last? This is what we call prayer. That you pray God's word back to Him. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, alam ko, marami pa akong revelations na marireceive dito. And I will meditate on this. And then what happens? It starts to give you yung clear word ni God. How much of God's word are we putting If, if you remember, no, yung tinatawag na brainwashing, alam nyo kung pinaka ano, literal meaning ng brainwashing? It is washing of the brain. Oh, ganun lang kasimple yun. Bakit ka ba naguhugas ng plato? Kakain ka ba sa maduming plato? Bakit ba yung damit nilalabhan mo? Gusto mo ba magsuot ng maduming damit? Ganun din ang utak natin. Bakit natin kailangan linisin to? Dahil kasi ang daming kalat na pumapasok sa mundo natin, na pinapasok natin sa utak natin at sa puso natin. So, how do we store God's Word? Four letters, soap. Pag may nakita kayo sa bahay, soap, alam nyo na. Eh, pastor, paano po kung powdered soap? Eh, bahala ka na magdagdag doon. Pero, again, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. As we go home later, as we go back to our respective places, you can start reading Psalms 119, etong specific verse na pinag-aaralan natin. And you can start applying soap. Lord, kanina, ito yung narinig ko. But Lord, ano pa ba yung gusto mo sabihin sa akin? And then you will now appreciate and love. Lord, grabe pala, ito pala yung love letter mo sa akin. Hindi ko na pala kailangan ng mga guwapo na nagsasabing, uy, ang ganda-ganda mo. Ito na pala, sa Bible pa lang, nakukuha ko na. Hello? Second thing that we have to understand, not just that we pursue God, but we declare God's Word. Siyempre, the one who is obedient cannot keep silent. Sino dito yung mga marites? Huwag nyo na itas yung kamay nyo. Di ba ganun ang mga marites? Parang, uy, may narinig lang, kakwento na niya. And that, is should, that should be our attitude. towards God's Word. In verse 12, it says that, Blessed are you, Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. When God's Word is hidden in our hearts, praises come out of it. May nakita ka na bang taong masaya at sinasabi niya puro pangit? Wala, di ba? Subukan mong manalo sa loto. Diba, magdadaldal ka, o, nanalo ko sa loto, diba? Ang ingay mo eh. Or meron kang nakitang isang magandang, uh, nagbakasyon ka, nakita mong ganda-ganda, ikukwento mo yan, i-Instagram mo yan, ipopost mo yan sa Facebook mo, ipapakita mo, woke up like this, nandito ka sa lugar na to. Because it cannot contain those things into your life. So that's the reason why you declare it. And that is what the scripture is saying, that when you teach me your statues, My lips, I will declare all the rules 
of my mouth. The psalmist, in telling everyone to praise God, are doing what all men do when they speak what they care about. Sa totoo lang, if you care for someone, you cannot stop saying those things. Especially sa may mga apo, di ba? Paglabas ng apo, oh, ganda-ganda nung kamukhang-kamukha ni Lola. Di ba? Yung mga ganun. Kamukhang-kamukha ni ganito. Tapos sa mga pictures, papakita mo, ito yung anak mo. Because that's how we are. When we love someone, it cannot contain the happiness, the joy that we want to share it. Ngayon, pagdating sa scripture, sa Bible, do we have the same passion to share God's word? Or, wag na lang po, eh, nakakaya, baka ma-offend sila eh. Hello? Every time you flip the Bible, every time you open God's Word, it speaks to you like a mirror. And it shows you how dirty we are and how unrighteous we are in front of a very righteous God. Verse 14, it says, In the way of your testimony, I delight as much in all riches. When God's Word is hidden in our hearts, rejoicing also flows out of us in spite of kahit anong riches pa yan. Kahit anong sabihin mo, bigyan kita ng isang milyon. Sino sa inyo dito matutuwa pag binigyan ako ng isang milyon? Buti na lang han, wala, no? <laughs> Dahil kasi wala rin akong ganun, eh. <laughs> Pero what we're saying here is this. Even when it shows you your testimony, Makikita mo how the Lord has transformed this person's life. That person will always delight and speak about God and speak about the things that the Lord has done into his heart. According to Charles Spurgeon, and it says here that riches are desirable as the means of procuring the necessaries of life, but God's testimony supplies the necessities of the soul. Riches are desirable as means of procuring personal enjoyment But God's testimony produced the highest joy. Riches are desirable as a means of attaining worldly improvement, but God's testimonies bring eternal improvement. Riches are desirable as means of doing good, but God's testimony work a higher good. How many of us heard of testimonies upon testimonies of God's goodness in our lives? I remember someone approached me and said, can you pray that my family will be attending church? We started praying. Lo and behold, a month, sabi niya, Pastor, kasama ko na po yung wife ko. A month or a week, sabi niya, Pastor, yung dalawang anak ko, kasama ko na. And he's starting to bring his families. And that is what testimonies, it will surpass all riches because of the things that God is doing into that person's and to that person's family, we can say, Lord, salamat. Makikita namin, my families are now rejoicing with me. My families are also now joining, praising God. And lastly, how, do we can, how can we store God's Word in our life? We have to delight in God's Word by meditating in God's precepts. Verse 15, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Question, what delights us will capture our attention and we think about it and meditate about it? What delights you right now? Is it your career? Is it your position, your title? Is it something that ito yung pinupursu ko eh. But are we delighting in the very precepts and word of God in our life? If you remember in scriptures that it says we are like athletes, soldiers. Bakit? We fix on ice. On the, on the price that God has in store for us. In a race, bakit ka ba naka, naka-focus dun sa finish line? Hindi dahil gusto mo matapos yung race, 
but you will focus and see na pagka naging number one ako dun sa, sa finish line, I will get the prize. And that is what the Lord is saying to us, that when we meditate on your precepts, that we will focus our eyes, our attention, our well-being in you. The blessing that will flow from God through us are an addition lang. Hello? Why are we why are we being blessed? Yung term na blessed ako eh. Kasi dahil may pera ka sa bangko, blessed ako eh. Bakit? Dahil kasi hindi kami nagugutom, blessed ako eh. Dahil kasi meron akong ganitong... Do you get my, my, my point? Do you see the picture that... Are we speaking blessing based on the mater- material things that we have or are we speaking blessing because of what God is doing in our life? Hello? Remember, this should be the true, uh, the true of God's Word. That what we fix our eyes on to, it's not what the blessings that we can get from Him, but what we can know from Him. Greg Oden says, to meditate on Scripture is to allow the truth of God's Word to move from head to heart. It is to so dwell upon a truth that it becomes part of our being. When temptations hit us, anong ipambabala natin? Pag nakaharap mo ang demonyo at tinetempt ka niya, Anong scriptures ang ibabato mo? Dennis, alam mo, ang dami kong scriptures na alam eh. Oh, that's good. But my question is this as well. Eh, ang demonyo, marami ring alam yan. Baka mas, mar- mas marami pang alam sa yan. When you are faced in a situation, you are down. Ano yung sasabihin mo? It's one way for us to memorize God's word it's also one way for us to obey God's Word. And it's also one way for us to make that Word real in our life. Do you want to know what God wants you to do with your life? Lord, ano bang purpose mo sa akin? Have you heard the term chewing the cud? Yan. So, ito yung mga baka, no? Pag lumabas ka dyan, wala ka na makikita ang baka. Pero, the term chewing the cud refers to animals who are eating grass. Ibig sabihin niyan, the cows will chew, 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 lulunokin niyan, tapos i-regurgitate uli nila yan. Ibig sabihin, that cows, dairy cows, spends almost 8 hours a day chewing their cud. That's around 30,000 chews a day. Ang daming chews, no? When a cow chews her cud, she is regurgitating a bolus of food in her mouth which she, re- she rechews and re-swallow. When she does this, saliva is created which contains a natural antacid. This helps to buffer the rumen, which is, well, I will not explain this, but this is what chewing the cud is important. Chewing the cud is often used as an indicator of good health and contentment. Sa, sa mga baka. Are we like those cows who choose God's word? Kaya nga yung mga baka pag tinay mo, nguya ng nguya eh. 30,000 a day, cows will chew the grass. It's not just because yung digestive system nila mahina, hindi. What they're doing is they're chewing it slowly for the nutrients, for the body to be absorbed by the cows. Kaya nga pagka naggatas sila, ganun nakaganda yung gatas nila. And that should be our attitude when we sit down and meditate on God's Word. As we chew 
Meditate on the Word of God. Wag naman yung pag-uwi mo ng bahay, sabi ni Pastor Itchukoy, pinilas mo yung Bible, nginuya mo. Wag naman ganon. What I'm saying here is this, if that specific word hits you, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this scripture? Lord, what are you telling me about this word? Lord, what do you want me to learn from my quiet time? Kaya nga, quiet time, hello? Are we chewing God's word? Are we writing down the verses? Are we observing every scripture that we have? Are we applying it in our everyday life? Let's be like the cows. Wag naman kayong pupunta dito next Sunday, biglang, urr, gano'n kayo. Wag naman. But what we're saying, Dennis, ang hirap kasi mag, ano, magbasa ng Bible eh. Kailan ka ba huli nagbasa ng Bible? Challenge. Ilan sa inyo dito na pupuyat ka papanood ng series sa Netflix? Pagdating sa Bible, tulog. Isa ulo nyo yung Bible. Oh, gawin yung unan. Isa ulo nyo. If you can spend hours and hours and excited, ano ba yung susunod sa series na to? Dapat ganun din tayo sa scripture. Dapat ganun din tayo magbasa ng Bible. One thing that when you open your eyes in the morning, you will grab your Bible, you will grab your smart your cell phone, open your Bible and listen to God's word. And dun ka na mag-start mag-meditate and then start chewing. Ano ba yung natutunan ko ngayong araw na to? Ano ba yung kailangan ko matutunan sa sinasabi ni God? Remember, reading the Bible is vital for every Christian. How can we learn about God or grow spiritually if we do not spend time studying the book by which He has made Himself known to us? Taking a few minutes each day to read a chapter is a good way to start. Let me just give you a different perspective. Minsan kasi feeling natin that, ah, kailangan tatlo, liman chapters a day, right? But let me challenge you. It can be a one verse. But on that one verse or one chapter, if you're reading Proverbs, let me tell you this. Hirap ka magbasa ng Bible, start reading Proverbs. Proverbs has 31 chapters. We have 31 days in our calendar, right? So in Proverbs, ano tayo ngayon? September 14, right? Start September, uh, sa, September. Start Proverbs 14. Read it. Write it down. Observe what was said on Proverbs 14. Apply what was, what was uh, uh, said on the Word and then pray it back to the Lord and say, Lord, ano ba yung gusto mo ma- Sabihin sa akin dito. You want to have wisdom? Read Proverbs. Bukas, 15, right? Ano ba ngayon? 11 lang pala ngayon. Mali pa yun, no? Thank you. <laughs> Start reading Proverbs 11 now. Tomorrow, 12, 13, so on and so forth. Do you see the picture? Do you understand what's happening? And you will now see O nga, no? Pag binasa ko tong Bible, it starts to clear off those cobwebs in my, my, my mind, in my heart, my doubts. Kung nahihirapan ka magbasa, kapatid, start with Proverbs. Kung nahihirapan ka magbasa, eh, Dennis, nababasa ko na yung Proverbs, eh. Paano ba? You can go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, yung Gospels, and then start reading it. Have a plan. Kung saan ka magiging excited, dapat sa pagbabasa at kilalanin yung Panginoon na pinagsisilbihan natin. Verse 16, and I will, I will end it here. It says here that I will delight in your statues and I will not forget your word. Remember, you must pray and consult this wonderful guidebook, the Bible, every day. 
not just weekly, not just monthly, but every day. Kung binabasa mo yung, yung manual ng phone mo, para paano siya i-operate, ganun din sa buhay natin. How can we operate our lives? By reading. Do you want to know God's plan in your life? Read the Bible. Do you know what God's plan is for you? Read the Bible. You know how to fight the battles every day? Read the Bible. Do you know how to, to, to win everything in, in our spiritual life? Read the Bible. When you find a man meditating on the words of God, let me tell you this, my friends, that man is full of boldness and is successful. And I love what Joshua 1.8 says, that the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then, this is what the Lord said to Joshua, that it will make your ways prosperous, then you will be successful. You want to be successful in life? Joshua 1.8. My challenge for you is reading the Bible a necessary part of your day or does it have a low priority in your life? That's my challenge for you this, day, this morning. Are we seeking God every day? Or nandun lang siya, Lord, pagkailangan lang kita, babasahin kita. Baka mamaya pag binuksan mo yung Bible ngayon, may lumabas na gagamba. Dahil kasi hindi mo na nababasa eh. Ano ba yung nasa puso natin? What are the things that we store in our hearts right now? Is it the very Word of God? Or is it the world that dictates ito ka dapat? And lastly, as I call on the keyboard, uh, keyboardist, to be a healthy Christian, don't treat the Bible as snack food. God's Word is not meant to be fast food. Take time for a long chew. Because meditation is more than reading the Bible and believing it, but it's applying Scripture to everyday life. Baka sabihin mo sa akin, Pastor, di ba meditation napaka-negative niyan? Hindi. When we meditate on God's Word, we focus on the things that we see. And we start asking God, Lord, hindi ko maintindihan tong sinasabi mo sa akin. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to open my eyes. Help me understand. Sa totoo lang, no one can fathom God's wisdom. God's revelation was given to us 2,000 years ago. But what we do right now as we read God's Word, it is an enlightenment to us. The Holy Spirit is shedding light in our darkest, most crooked, most wicked part of our heart. And it's giving us wisdom. How do we live our life Let's not treat the Bible as a snack food or a fast food na nagmamadali ka. Take time. Kailan ba ako pwede mag-start? Mamaya, pag natin, start the habit. You want to know more? The God that we're serving, Psalm 119 gave us the answer by storing His Word into our hearts. Amen? Let's pray. Father, Thank you so much for this time. Lord, we know it's sometimes so hard to fight our battles here in this world. But Lord, thank you because we know 
that every time we store your word in our hearts, Lord, we have something that we can pull out in case that we face temptations in our lives. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I pray and I declare that we will have a habit, Lord, of sitting down, not in a hurry, not snacking on your word, but really chewing on it. Just like what the cows are doing, chewing the cud. But Lord, we want to chew on your word slowly. Lord, teach us. Teach us, Lord, to really appreciate and love your word. Because we know, God, that every time we encounter you, there's fresh revelation. Father, we thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. All right, God bless you. See you next Sunday on our third installment of Walk the Talk. You are now sent off. God bless you and have a blessed Sunday.